and it appears we are live. What's up, everybody? This is G. Mr. Drew, here to welcome you to another episode of the Andrew Gloszewski Experience. This is episode 86, and on this episode, we are, let me adjust this camera, we are going to continue There we go. Look at that. Wave the hand like a magician and the focus kicks back in. We're going to continue working on the map. Uh, I kind of hit the stride of like... Oh, there, goes my, there goes my phone. Uh, I kind of hit the stride of like... I, I just realized, oh, I don't... I don't need any references anymore. I think I got everything in there that I need and I kind of know what everything is. Um, shouldn't say I don't need them anymore. I just don't need them for the most part, especially to do what I need to do on this video, which is just to continue rendering um, and picking things up where I, wherever. Um, but yeah, so let's... Uh, Yeah, let's continue this. Let me get one picture in before I start. So I have a starting place. Since this is a work in progress, and I'm sure it'll continue to be a work in progress when I'm when I'm done with this video. But yeah, it's coming along great. I'm really enjoying this. I hope you guys are as well. I know maps are a little clunky, but, you know, they aren't the first thing that comes to mind when the idea of design comes up. So, yeah. All right, we got that. I got my pencil. I have a uh, Fat Man on Batman uh, playing in the background. They just got done interviewing this guy who does this thing called uh, Bat in the Sun. And I haven't watched it. I, I just added some videos to the playlist to get to them later. Uh, so I'll see what that's all about uh, soon enough. But I mean, if he, you know... Uh, if they're interviewing them, obviously there's something to it, you know? So, hopefully. Hopefully it's something I can get down with. It seemed cool. Um, independent filmmakers. Of course, I'm going to try to do my best to support that whatever I can. Because that's absolutely what I'm trying to do. Um, that's why I'm building this map, you know? It's... uh. Let me see where I'm at on the timestamp. That way I can play the video in the background, but it'll be low. And, you know, obviously I want to kind of keep the uh, conversation going. All right, so I'm at 90 minutes. So, yeah, it's, uh, it, that's exactly why I'm making this map is it's to in order to serve my IP and everything. Uh, obviously, I don't want to get into spoilers and talk about it too much, so I just always call it my IP. Um, working title, my IP. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, super dope. And... You know, some some people need more than others. I've I've gone ahead and uh, because I couldn't get the jobs that I wanted, couldn't work with the companies that I wanted, couldn't you know. Instead of being a jaded person, and instead of like hating my position and holding grudges, and, and instead of you know harboring negativity into my life, I decided like. I'm I'm going to do this. Like like I know how much work it's going to be. It's an insane amount of work. But guess what? I I can do it. 
would I like would I like it to go down some other way? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I would love it if I could uh you know, just focus on writing the story and writing uh scripts and doing the main concept designs and jumping through everything and jumping ahead and doing all that stuff and then leaving things like, you know, the map to other people. But, you know, unfortunately I can't afford things like that. You kind of have to, if you can't afford it, uh, you know, you're going to have to do it yourself. So even though working on maps like this is out of my wheelhouse, it's been so much fun. It's been such a pleasure to learn uh, how to how to do things, you know, and learn that I can do it. Yeah, you know, it, it's odd. So yeah, I mean, that's that's why I'm doing this, is because I've built a whole world. I've probably talked about it in the past, but as uh, my viewership continues to grow, I mean, I got 13 followers, man, that's insane. I, I love it. <laughs> like, like, when I started this, I had zero. I remember the first uh, episode I recorded on Twitch, I didn't have a means of seeing the chat. We're out, you know, because the camera's behind my eyesight. So it's like behind my, you know, it's not necessarily behind my head, but it is above my eyes. And I can't see uh, the chat. And I remember on episode one, some guy reached out to me. It was like, dude, I was uh, talking to you and you didn't, you didn't see it. I don't think you could see the, the chat. And I was just like, oh shit, he's right. I can't see the chat. <laughs> I, I tried reaching out to him after that, being like, hey, you know, I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure this out. And, da, 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 da. and then he uh, never got back to me. I don't think I've seen him since then. Which is fine. It's fair. It's like, I get it. You know. Oh, okay, they're talking about the Black Widow movie release and how it plays into the overall lineup of things. And I guess they're, re oh yeah, that's right. I did see an article talking about how it was going to be releasing out into uh, theaters and streaming at the same time. I'm sure, you know, it's uh, it's going to be them testing the waters, see how many numbers comes in from theaters how, and what are the numbers coming in from uh, streaming. I think it's pretty obvious. Obviously, uh, streaming is going to be the one that, like, wins at, at the moment. But, you know, how much is it going to win by? It's it's like a temperature check to see what how everyone is feeling. Yeah, and plus I'm sure they, you know, these companies have like the numbers to, uh, to do, uh, 
the analytics of like, okay, yeah, theaters are at 25% capacity. So obviously, even if they were full and these are the numbers, um, they're not going to be above the 25% uh, margin of profit. Da, 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 da. You know what I mean? Like, like they're going to run numbers and figure all that kind of stuff out. Um, but yeah, going back to my recording, um, and, and just what I'm, what am I doing here? Um, building maps and, and all the characters, the story that I'm working on. Hey, what's up viewer? Thanks for uh, stopping by. I hope, uh, you're just chilling and not ducking in and out, but it is what it is. Uh, I mean, the story itself is... I mean, I spent five years writing the outline of it and mapping out the timeline of it. And essentially it follows one main character, of course. But I do have 400 characters in this story. They're all named. I, I have thumbnails for every single one of them that are in my sketchbooks. Those are those rough pencils whenever I work on a character. Uh, like in a pretty recent video while I was working on, you know, this guy. Uh, and I, I added his tail since the last time you seen him. Uh, you know, I forgot that when I, when I worked on him. But when I worked on this guy and I showed like a small uh, five and a half by eight sketchbook that I have. Come on, focus. Focus. There we go. A five and a half by eight uh, sketchbook with like a really small rough thumbnail just pencils of the character and I have that for all 400 characters already that was part of the whole five-year journey I have I don't know how many location things I know I have like a bunch of pages I I don't even know how many pages it is, anywhere from like 40 to 80 pages, and every page is double-sided and has six illustrations of environments on it, or like thumbnails of environments, uh, because I wasn't, I was a, I'm a character artist, I, I focus more on characters, um, but I was like, just like how I'm working on this map, and I'm like, yo, I gotta do this map, I gotta do, I gotta do these, uh, environments <laughs> and <laughs> sorry and uh, so I don't know you do the math even if it's just 40 pages double-sided that's 80 roughly 80 by 6 so about 480 environment thumbnail sketches like I you know the timeline uh, like I said, it, it the story follows one character. I have four, about 400 characters, and uh, it spans a timeline of about 40 years. And after I did some writing, I think there's only one two-year time skip in there. You know, this being me, me being inspired by anime and things like that, I didn't know if I was gonna have a time skip or not. I didn't like count on it. I didn't plan on it. But then when I was doing the writing portion, I got to a certain part and I was just like, hmm. I was like, there's not much story to tell here. So let me just fast forward a couple years at, at a certain point in the story. So yeah, out of the 40 year history, there's a two year time skip within. So, you know, we're, I'm still gonna be telling 38 years of history for the main character, and then obviously it kind of spans out and webs out uh, from him to all the other characters that are in this story. Uh, you know, that beetle guy that I I was just showing you, the crab guy that I worked on recently, um, the dragon, the, the, the chick with the wings, with the 
with, with the peg leg. Um, the, the, the frost, uh, monster guys, like all these characters, they're all a part of that world. And again, I, I barely scratched the surface with it because they're, um, like I said, 400 characters. I probably just went through five of them. I'm up to five. <laughs> like I barely scratched the surface with these things. Um, there we go. Um, so yeah, the, you know, just tailing it back to what started it, you know, Fat Man Beyond, they were, uh, interviewing this guy, Bat in the Sun, and I was just talking about how it's like, I don't, I don't know that stuff, but I put it on the playlist to play, so it'll, it'll get to it eventually, uh, you know, playing in the background while I work and do my work and all that stuff. And then I'll, I'll figure out what they're talking about. But yeah, he's an independent filmmaker. And, um, you know, this this is production art. Hey. Nisa Kasprani, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, you know, I, I ramble. <laughs> and so I, uh, uh, I don't glance over at the chat too long. You know, I'm, I'm so busy in thought and then trying to render these things out. But thank you. This is the second map I've ever worked on. Uh, so this is my second attempt at ever making one. So it's, it's like, <laughs> uh, but fortunately, you know, I've, I've done a whole lot of background research and, you know, like I've said, I've, I've thumbnailed a bunch. Like I have my references here from years ago where these are all thumbnails this is what I was just talking about having uh, loose leaf paper with six sketches per side and having about maybe 400 rough things. And then I also have this world map that I designed after some time and all the environments and things like that. I created this world map again, just on a piece of loose leaf with some pencil. And I was just like, okay. And just so we're clear, the first map I worked on, you know, maybe a couple months ago was just this, this portion of the map, you know, and now the, the portion that I'm working on now is maybe from here to about here, you know, something like that. And you could see I'm, I'm kind of working my way up and piecing this map together bit by bit and, you know, landmass by landmass. Uh, so yeah, this is the second, like, I guess, official artwork that I'm making for the map. Um, and you know, it's not like a entirely super accurate map, but you know, it's like a legend to kind of, uh, place all the important pieces and then highlight those. So, uh, you know. I've spent a lot of time on, on these things already. So that way, when I get to this part, it's like, oh, okay, I, I can kind of figure out what I'm doing now. But I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Cause yeah, this is super daunting. You know, at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm like, even though I feel good about this, 
<laughs> I'm like, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure if this is like doing what I need it to do. I feel like it is, but because I don't know, because I'm not like, you know, aware of how all this stuff works. Usually I just focus on characters and it's like, okay, I know one character art is good, but as far as environments and maps go, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, it always becomes about uh, Uh, supporting independent artists, supporting independent ventures, like, I do it as much as I can because that's what I'm doing, you know? And I can't, I can't be somebody who's trying to create his own thing and not be willing to recognize when other people are doing the same thing, man. I, I understand how much work goes into stuff like this. So that Batman in the Sun independent director independent creator it's like yeah I can't wait to for his video to pop up on my playlist and I'll check it out so yeah what was I talking about with the uh, you know 400 characters 40 years of history and even like this map and everything that I'm working on now, like I haven't even scratched the surface really of what I'm doing. Which is fine. Like I, I kind of knew that going in. And the whole reason why I'm, I'm, I've taken on this whole task is, um, like I said, I didn't want to be bitter or frustrated that like I'm not living my dream I'm not I'm I'm not happy I'm not like I didn't want to live in in that world of just you know I got a degree in animation and you know I got into college when I was 17 years old I was a kid when you're a kid you understand the world one way. And I thought, you know, I go into college, I get this degree, I graduate, I graduate, I got my bachelor's in animation at 21. And you go out into the world, you go get a job and, and you go work. And my goal was like to get a job in the animation industry and work on cartoons, work on movies, work um, doing characters and this and that. You know, the same goal anyone and everyone I imagine has Obviously, you have like VFS, VFX artists and environment artists and prop artists and 3D artists and 2D artists and story. And like, obviously, there's a bunch of different um, like positions you can work with. At what age you started drawing? Because your drawing is just really amazing. Uh, thanks. Uh, I learned. I'm 32 now, so I'm 32 years old right now. Um, I learned that I was an artist, like I could draw well when I was in second grade. And I want to say when I was in second grade, I was probably like seven years old. Maybe, right? I think that if, if I was in 12th grade in 06, I would have been in second grade in 96. And if I was born in 88, okay, so yeah, I was like seven or eight years old when I realized I can draw uh, because of a, a school assignment. You know, the, the teacher gave us an assignment to draw half of a picture, and then you have a partner um, who will draw the other half of the picture. And... That's that's how I learned, like, oh, I could draw because I drew a dragon. I started the picture off and I drew this really half 
of a dragon kind of standing on two legs facing forward things like that and I, it took up half the page and then I gave it to my partner this kid named Justin I still remember <laughs> and uh, he attempted to draw the rest of the picture of the dragon that I made and he tried to like match it on the other side and it was like so this is gonna sound mean but it was so bad <laughs> and uh so when I looked at his drawing and I was like, oh, I could draw. Like, I wasn't smart. I wasn't an athlete. But I was like, ooh, I could draw. Um, that's when I started looking at everybody else's drawing in the assignment, in the classroom. You know, people drew like simple things like butterflies, this, that, and the other. I drew a freaking dragon with scales and a horn, probably. You know, it was like a full body dragon, claws, feet. Like, and people were drawing like butterflies, you know, simple like, you know, the, the, the B shape with a circle in the middle. Because <laughs> we were all second graders. So I realized I could draw in second grade and that's when I started drawing. I would draw Looney Tunes, you know, kids would give me lunch money, <laughs> like, uh, I've been drawing a long time, so if I, you know, it's about 25 years of, of drawing and illustration. And you know, I, because I was a kid and I realized um, I could draw, I uh, was watching cartoons like any other kid does, and it was it was then that I realized, oh, like I, I was watching. Uh, I used to watch Batman and Gargoyles a lot when I was a kid, and I remember specifically. I have this memory. I was sitting at the kitchen table at my uncle's place in Michigan, and you know gargoyles was playing on the screen i remember i was watching it from across from the kitchen to the living room so you know the it, it was in a whole different room and i remember sitting at the kitchen table watching the gargoyles intro and you know it's dun 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 and then like they have like you know they're they're doing the whole intro thing and I remember specifically a part, I think his name is Brooklyn, the uh, the brown gargoyle, when he's climbing up the building and, he, you know, his, his claws are digging into the concrete and you hear <laughs> as he's climbing up the building in the intro. And uh, it hit me. And I was probably in third grade at that point. It hit me. Like, oh, these are drawings. These drawings are just moving. How do these people make their drawings move? Because I can draw now. Like, I've been drawing for maybe a year at that point. It's like, oh, I can draw. But I can't make my drawings move. How are these people making their drawings move? And then that's kind of when the, the whole idea of like, oh, I want to be an animator. Not only do I want to draw, not, not only do I want to create, you know, stuff like this, I want to bring it to life. So, you know, so I've had the dream of animating since uh, third grade, you know, eight, nine years old. And, uh, oh, man. And, and that takes me back to what I was saying about not wanting to be bitter, not wanting to be angry at my life, not, not wanting to be unsatisfied. And the reason why I do this Twitch stream and why I, I kind of share, I'm sharing all of this artwork right now, because right now this is just the concept design. This is just the, the concept stage. And I thought it was a good way to... Um, uh, get my story out there without revealing the story is to just like, hey,
hey, these these are the characters, these are the worlds, the, the these are the places, this is how these people live. Like I work on props, characters, environments, uh, and then maps as well. And uh, are we focused? Yeah. Hey, what's up, JJ? How's it going, man? Yeah, I was in the middle of breaking down everything that I'm working on here and, and, and how, how it's gotten to this point and everything that I'm doing. It's kind of a rinse and repeat of things I've said in the past, but I imagine, you know, I've, I have a, a few more followers than I did before. So, you know, I know people don't get to see the older streams. Um, I post them on my YouTube channel and they're kind of backlogged there. But you know, there there's a bit of a gap. So you may have heard some of these stories in the past, or some people may have, but you know, there there's as long as there's new people rolling in and I I appreciate it very much. Uh yeah, I'll probably have to retell the story a, a few times. You know. I'll I'll try to keep it spaced out though. Everything doing good, man. That's that's what's up. I'm glad to hear it, man. So yeah, I, I was just talking about how um how I you know I don't want to be angry, I don't want to be bitter, and everything like that. But I've you know it was difficult for me as someone who's drawn his whole life or most of his life 25 out of 32 years like that's a that's a good chunk of time that i've spent drawing with the the specific goal in mind of like i want to work in the animation industry i want to create my own animations eventually um my original goal was get into the industry and work and learn learn the industry learn how to do this stuff oh, what's going on here there we go figured it out um so yeah the goal was the I'm losing my train of thought <laughs> the goal was to like get into the industry learn learn it and then eventually you know work my way up it and it never panned out for me like it just didn't it just didn't work out and I got into graphic design just as a means to pay the bills and 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 earn a living. But the the entire time, in in the background, I uh, I I did Artist Alley. I, I did art shows. I you know got into comic books. You know because sequential illustration and storyboarding are very much are very they're not very much the same thing but they're very similar absolutely you don't mind revisiting the old stories good as long as long as I keep retelling them hopefully they get a little bit better every time <laughs> um So, so I, I, I always worked on animation in the background and uh, for 10 years I did graphic design and never got an opportunity with comics or, or uh, animation. And the reason why I started looking at comics was because I was like, okay, maybe I could storyboard for animation. And, you know, I see a resemblance between storyboards 
and and comic panel illustrations. You know, they're just sequential storytelling. There we go. And you know, when you work at like you know, conventions and you go to Artist Alley and things like that, like, it, it's, you know, some of them are for animation, but most of them are for comics, you know, especially since uh, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has blown up in the past 10 years also, like, that became more and more prevalent and more and more popular, you know, as the my time working in, in those spaces. Add some drama mystery, make it more interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, I, I just come out here and I, I just I just speak my truth, man. That, that's all it is. Hey, you know, like this is my story. This is this is, you know, everything that I've done. Because that's the thing that I run into most like on on here. And it makes sense is like people like, who are you? Uh, what do you do? What are you doing? Things like that. And I don't mind, you know, having to explain it all and all that other stuff. It makes sense because, you know, the whole thing that I'm trying to do here is get myself out here, you know, and and let people see me and see my work and see what I'm doing and really expose myself like this is the goal. Um, but, yeah. As long as long as it's the truth, then yeah, I can add some mystery and things like that. Maybe I can add a. <laughs> yeah, you you can you can DM me, man. Was that like on messengers? Hey, thanks for the follow, Nisa. Um. Yeah, I, I believe you can. What just message me on uh on Twitch here. Go ahead, man. There we go. There we go. I can't wait to get to this area. I love I love this part of the story. That this is something that sat in my head from the very beginning when I started this years ago. And the more I told the story, the more I wondered. I'm like, can I still fit that in there? And uh, I'm gonna make it fit. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make that work. Um, so I've developed some story just around this portion of the uh the area so yeah after 10 years of graphic design and it's not a bad profession like it can be really fun i i, I was fortunate enough to have like some create some creative positions and things like that, but it's just not what I wanted to do. And, you know, it's difficult for 10 years to, you know, be focused on your profession, but also make the side time. Oh yeah, 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 you can, you can, yeah, DM me anywhere, you know, Twitter, Instagram, any of that stuff, man. You know, if you have a different, if you go by a different name, just let me know. Because I know people, sometimes they'll, they'll have different names and I'll be like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> uh, it sounds like it will be that battle ground zero. I don't know what you're talking about, ground zeros. Battle, are you talking about um, Metal Gear Solid 5? Ground Zeroes, which is badass. Uh, 
Um, all right, what was I? What was I talking? Oh yeah, ten years working. Uh, you know, spending half my time on graphic design to pay the bills, and then another ten years. Well, not another ten years, but during that time also. Uh, continuing to try to better myself and get into the animation industry or comic book industry and then just having zero luck it just I, I mean I can't explain it I other than like I just can't seem to figure out how to get in you know and I understand it it's difficult that's fair. Anything that's worth it is always going to be difficult. But I don't know, man. 25 years of illustration. I mean, the want to do it, the ability to do it. I, I just don't see how I haven't been able to just get a chance, just just an opportunity. Hey, work on this cover. G you know what, we won't give you a comic, but we'll give you a comic book cover, and we'll see how that goes. You know, even something like that. Like, please. <laughs> like, let me get that. Let me, let me show you what I can do, man. If I, if I can get in to just anything. It's like, it's how I was able to do graphic design. I didn't get a degree in graphic design. I got the job because I, you know, I put in the hard work. I, I had to learn graphic design on the fly. Like, I had zero experience with it. So, you know, I, I had to learn that whole industry. And after 10 years, I worked my way up. I started training people on how to do it. It's like, I work hard, man. So when you work that hard and you're aware of it, and you're trying to work that hard in the direction that you're trying to go in your life and in your profession, it gets a bit frustrating. And again, this is why I started the channel. You said that this area has been on your mind, so I thought it would be a battleground zero. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is actually like a really big, a big plot element in the, uh, in the overall story. I know I said like when I, when I start working on these environments, they're not all that too important to the main story. Because again, showing that world map, uh, you know, I've only worked on this part of the map and now I'm working on this part of the map over here. But my main character is from here-ish. He's like from the, around this area. I forget exactly, but you know, once I get around to there and I look at my references and everything that I have. Um, but yeah, he, he's from like around this area. And then obviously everything, all of his interactions kind of spiral out from there. So by the time he ever, he gets down here, we're so far into the story that uh that's what i mean like everything i work on now is kind of inconsequential but um that's kind of why i did it was because it's uh you, you know because i have no idea what i'm doing when it comes to map design i'm just drawing a picture and i'm praying <laughs> that this picture interprets correctly as like, oh yeah, no, this is definitely a map. So it was like, I didn't want to start with the most important places. I wanted to start with the places that are kind of not that important, not too many characters in them.
So yeah, that that's why I started the stream, started everything, is because, you know, the past five years that I spent writing the story and working on it, I was I was afraid, because again, I was you know working graphic design, and I was afraid to share all all the concept and all the ideas and everything like that, and I don't regret that at all, but it did take me off of uh, social media a lot, you know, so I kind of had like a dead period of not posting much and everything like that just because I was working on these stories and, and mapping it out, like I said, you know, 400 characters, 40 years of history, um, and a ton of concept design and a ton of ideas. Um, like I said, I was frustrated. I was really frustrated. And what motivated me to do this and to work on these things and to step out from just working on characters and say, you know what, if I have to, if I have to do all of this myself, I will. I hope not. I hope eventually I can, you know, actually like work with a team and work with a crew and hire people and do things like that. Like, but that's so far down the line that. No, obviously, not even worth talking about right now. But if I told myself, like, if I have to do everything myself, that's what I'm going to do. And that's why I'm sitting here working on a map right now. And yeah, so I just used the power of frustration to muscle through all the uh, heavy thinking parts of this. And now it's just about developing the actual visual part. Uh, you know, and all the visual elements, props, characters, uh, environments, maps, and creating the actual, the, the, the groundwork for it. And when I, start, when I set out to do that, I was like, I was still afraid to share the ideas because I was like, man, you know, people have been stealing my artwork for forever, forever. Even when I was in elementary school drawing things for kids, like they would take my drawings, not, not take them, like steal them from me, but I would like give them a picture, you know, maybe it's like Goku or something like that. And then they would they would erase my signature because I was dumb, you know, I was a kid. I, I was in elementary school. I didn't know to sign things in ink. <laughs> so I would sign them in pencil. And uh, they would erase my signature and then they would sign it. And I learned really fast. I learned at a really early age, like, oh, people can steal your artwork. Okay. And I've had my artwork stolen pretty much all my life, which it, it's a part of the game. You know what I mean? It's, it's a part of everything. It's not just artwork. It's any and all industries that do it. So it is what it is. But it was, it's because of that, that I had the fear of like, man, I really don't want to put all these ideas and concepts out there. Someone's just going to steal it. But at this point, my, you know, because I did all that heavy lifting the past five years of the stories and concepts and all the ideas, everything that's in my sketchbook, those rough pencils that I was just showing earlier, all, all just all the ideas, not really beautiful, pretty artwork, but just really, really uh, grounded ideas. It's like, okay, uh, I, I lost my train of thought, but either way. I just decided, you know what? They're, they're, it's all so unique. 
that I could just go ahead and do this. I hope no one steals any ideas from me, but even if they do, like, I know that my story's unique enough and that by the time I get around to telling it, uh, hopefully I'll have like some sort of established community. That's what I'm doing here is trying to develop a community of people who are interested in things and you know, maybe you want to create something and you know, maybe you, you just need the motivation to see how it's done. See somebody muscle their way through all the, uh, all, all the, uh, the scary elements of like, again, uh, not knowing what you're doing, but still doing it. Like me working on this map right now. Damn, what are they talking about now? I think they're talking about... I heard the word convention hall. <laughs> Must be talking about like pandemic and people gathering and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I didn't want to be that frustrated artist anymore. Just didn't want to. I didn't want to, you know, I, I listened to the uh, Joe Rogan podcast a lot. You're here for the ideas. That's what's up, man. See, that's why I'd be like so hush-hush with mine. Like, I, I, I don't mind sharing all this stuff now because it is what it is. I'm sure some people could look at it and be like, okay, I kind of see what's going on. But, uh, you know, that's, that's why I don't like share like, no, this person is named this and this is exactly who they are and what they like. Nah, that's going to come like way later, you know, um, way later. But yeah, there's a lot of good story in here, especially a lot more than the the ice place that I was working on. You know, that's a very secluded, very, you know, not much going on area. And it's meant to be, you know, you got to think about it. You, you compare, uh, I don't know, compare the, uh, the Amazon jungle to Alaska. Like, there's certainly life happening in both places, but, you know, there's probably a lot more life happening in in the Amazon than there is in Alaska. One, because of the size of the land, and two, just because of the location it, it has on the planet. You know, and just the way that life works. Okay, where do I want to go? Do I want to work on these islands? I think I want to start working over here and keep working from left to right I gotta get this little town over here
So yeah, I was just thinking about. Hmm. Just thinking about that interview on the, the, the Fat Man Beyond show that I'm listening to in the background and that's what got me on that, that whole tangent about being a creator and creating things. Led me down the path of <laughs> being a frustrated artist and wanting to do this. Like, again, I have to do this. It, it, it's gotten to the point where I'm like, I just don't know if like, if like life is worth living if I'm not gonna pursue this. I've been pursuing it forever, but I'm not one, I don't feel one step closer to working in the industry, you know? I'm making connections every every single day and I reach out, maybe not every single day, but I, I reach out, you know, throughout the week to people and you know, people are busy. Maybe the industry's stagnant, you know. It's all COVID times and things like that, so. So I just don't hear back from people still. It's no different than it was 10 years ago where you just speak out into the ether and and no one's there to to lend a helping hand at all. It's like I have friends in the industry. I have friends who work for Disney and and friends who work for Marvel and things like that. People who I used I used to go to school with, people who I used to work with, you know, I know, I know them. And when I see them at conventions and things like that, we say hey and we say what's up and all that. But then like I'll shoot them an email or something and I'll just be like, "Hey, you know, um like, is there anything I could do? Is there anywhere you can go? Can you point me in the right direction? Like, I don't need I don't need a free meal. I don't need a handout. But if you could just point your finger in the direction that I, I should be looking, like, you'd be doing way more help. You'd be doing a lot for me. But apparently that's, even that is a lot to ask for. You know, because I don't hear back from them. And it is what it is. Like, I don't know if it's a competition thing. I don't know. You know, they say industry is it's all about who you know and things like that. So when it was like, oh, I got friends who got in, it's like, I know people. And you think you could just like kind of reach out and they'll be they'll be just as cool as they were when when you know we were working together or when we were in class together or when we were in college together. You think they would be just as cool. But I don't know. I don't know what the mentality is. I, you know, I, I wish I even knew just that much. If it if it's like if it's personal, if it's professional if they just don't have the connection. Like, I wish they could just even say, hey, I can't, like, just respond at all. Like, no response, like, zero talking, zero everything. And it's weird because, you know, now it's been a few years and I've reached out a few times. Like I said, it's been a decade. So, you know, you can imagine over the course of a decade, I probably reached out two times, maybe three times to them. And, uh, in the beginning, you know, they respond. They'll they'll still talk to you like it's all, like it's cool. But then once you start asking questions and kind of obviously want to work and get work, I, I don't know, like maybe it's just something I wouldn't understand because I'm not in, you know, not in the company you know, maybe 
maybe it really is that difficult. Maybe it's like, hey, if I get this guy a job, he might take a job away from me sort of thing. I don't know. I hope not, but it works like that sometimes. Losing the spotlight from me. I don't know about all that. You know, I'm I'm not here to try try to take anything from anybody. You know, I, it's just the way I was raised. I was raised to really work hard. Um, and then just the way I grew up, I grew up, you know, burning the candle at both ends my entire life. So yeah, I, I work incredibly hard. That's why I graduated at 17. That's why I graduated at, got a bachelor's at 21. That's why I was able to self-teach myself graphic design and and become a, become a decent graphic designer to the point where I, I train people and taught them things. You know, I've trained people in graphic design and now they run their own website development company. Like, like, like I, I just I just work hard and I and you know when I teach people I, I don't shy away from it when people ask me questions I, I answer it when people reach out to me I do my best to, to get back to them of course and I usually do especially if I know them personally like if I know them personally we've spoken face to face before I'm definitely getting back to you. It's just why, you know, I'm sure I sound extremely bitter at this point about uh, people not talking to me, but it, it just makes me sad, you know, of like, oh, we were friends. Or at least I thought we were friends. You know, we were really cool. You know, they were really cool guys. So then when they ignore you, it's like, oh, man. Part of you wants to be like, did I do something? Did, did I mess it up? And then you're like, I don't think I did. Am I still on? Oh, I'm barely on the camera. Sorry. So then, you know, I just sit here confused like, oh, damn. This was going to be a problem. Oh, well, it'll be okay. So, yeah, it is what it is. I'm, I'm going to continue to do this. I'm going to continue to reach out into the, making connections, reaching out to people in the industry, seeing what I can do. You know, one thing, honestly, you know what's been really on my mind lately, but it wasn't a part of the plan, which is why... I kind of don't want to do it just yet. It's not a part of the plan yet, I should say. Is I need to put together a portfolio of sequential illustration of like an actual story. You know, like put together actual comic book pages. That way I can have a better opportunity when I apply to these... Uh, Storyboarding jobs, comic book jobs, things like that. It's just those jobs even pop up so far and few between. You 
you know, that's why, you know, I, I apply to like just concept design jobs right now because it's like, yeah, I'm an illustrator. Let me let me illustrate. And once I get a job into there and, you know, I have enough security, I can afford myself the time to write a script and to draw a sequence and demonstrate like, no, I, I can, I can tell a story for sure. And I've been thinking, you know, for the, like a couple weeks now, well, you, you know, a lot more than a couple of weeks, but just more seriously in the past couple of weeks of like wanting to put together an illustration because, you know, I'm working on this story and obviously I'm going to have to start the first story, the thing that kicks all of this off, you know what I mean? And I know that story, like I know the back of my hand, like I know that story. It's not even written. Like notes are written, but I, I haven't written an actual script for it yet. And I'm like, maybe I need to script that out and maybe I need to illustrate it and draw it. But again, that would be something that I don't want to share publicly. That's why I haven't worked on it. Because the last thing I want to do is jump ahead to the that story and then I don't know. And then people will start to feel away about all the work that I'm working on here. Because like I said, it's such a big story, you know, 400 characters, 40 years, there's a lot to it. So when I tell the first story, it's going to be so out of place from everything that I'm working on now. Because I don't, I don't expect people to be able to see the vision like, I, like how I see it. You know, I, I'm often thinking like, was, is working on the maps and the characters and everything like the way that I've done it? So far, you know, working with the kind of not the least important, but kind of not so important parts uh, just to get started so I can get, you know, so I can warm up my muscles and, and work up my art artistic hand and the process and all that stuff. I could work, I could flesh all that out while I work on these areas. And then when I go to uh, work on it, um, that way, by the time I get to the important stuff, like I know what I'm doing. That that's kind of what I'm talking about. Is I didn't want to, you know, the first story is obviously going to be the some of the most important stuff. You know, Avatar: The Last Airbender. It's really, really good. And you know what? That first episode is kind of rough, but that first, you know, compared to like season three quality. But you know what? That first episode is so important. And it's like, they nailed it. They got it perfect on the first try. There's nothing, there's nothing about Avatar The Last Airbender, first episode, last episode, that isn't consistent, that isn't answered for, that isn't uh, accounted for, that wasn't planned, things like that.
So yeah, I've just been working. Sorry, I was listening to Mark Bernard and talk about t-shirts and things like that and licensing. And it's like, yeah, you know, me as someone who puts together merchandise, I have my merch stores, gmrdrew.art. You hit up my website. You can, there's links to the merch stores in there. You can see previews and all that stuff. You know, I just updated it recently. And there's always more coming. Um, yeah, I, I have to work on my original work when it comes to merchandise. Because, yeah, I don't have the license for that stuff. But I do work with a company that does uh, does have licensing. So I can work on, like, fan art. You know, things... I can work on like, you know, basically fan art and throw it onto a t-shirt and I can sell it, but it has to go through them. And you know, there's a little more financial cost to it, but it's worth it. I like the fact that I can put together a shirt and designs with characters that I, that I like and enjoy. So yeah, I've been scrambling it in my brain of like, do I just kind of script out and draw the first st story? Here's the problem. The first story has an, it has an environment that is relevant that I haven't gotten to yet, obviously, because it's up closer to where the character begins and there's two characters in it there's three total but there's two that are like a, a part of the main 400 characters that I'm talking about but there's like basically three characters with speaking parts in that story and So that's two character um, designs that I have like rough thumbnails for. I know who these characters are. One of them's the main character, obviously. And then an environment I need to work on. And then the script that I have to write out. Now the only issue that I'm I'm running into with it is like I don't I don't want to put that story together and then you know throw it out there as like hey this is the first story maybe I have to throw like a disclaimer like subject to change because <laughs> uh, by the time I actually get around to doing the concept art for that area and those characters. Uh, You know, I, I imagine I'll have a way better idea.
It's only been an hour. I feel like I've gotten a lot done in this hour. So yeah, I've been trying to talk myself into it. I've also been telling myself, well, just tell a similar story. Like, it doesn't have to be the character. It doesn't have to be the location. You could just do what you think it is right now. And then whenever you get around to doing the actual real thing later on, then let it, you know, then figure that out then. So I've just been wrestling with that idea more and more lately. Feels like a lifetime. You can create separate story for each character, like build up and then inter interconnect to post on social media and stuff. Well, when it comes to telling the story, I already have the story mapped out. Like I already know how I'm gonna tell it. Basically, it's, it's, it follows the main character. You know what I mean? All the other characters, they, like, yeah, naturally, it's it, they're going to interact and things like that. But the only, there's only going to be, like, a few uh, spinoffs where the main character isn't the main character, if that makes sense. But the spinoffs only exist for... Um, The only reason why they're spinoffs in the first place is just because the main character is not there, but they're there to tell the story because eventually they do interact with the main character. And I just think it's important for the world building in order for their story to be told. Think of it like, uh, like in One Piece. The story follows Luffy. You know, Luffy's the main character. We follow him. Obviously, he has a crew, so we follow the crew. But right now, because they're in Wano they've been going back and telling Odin's story. That's a spinoff, you know. 
Odin's Odin story is a spinoff. But they they have to tell it in order to get the background of Odin and the history of Wano. Even though Luffy wasn't there for any of it. And that's what I mean by, like, I have spinoff and spinoff characters and things like that. Other than, and I think I only have nine of those. I, it's stated on my Patreon how many stories there are. I believe there's like 30-something stories and nine of them are, are spinoffs. So it's... So that's only nine stories where the main character isn't a part of them. Just like how Luffy isn't a part of the the, the Odin Wano flashback. But other than that, yeah, it's all about the main character and his interactions with the good guys and the bad guys and and all that stuff, all the drama and this and that and the other. Oh, I can't wait to start inking this and cleaning it up. Because even with the pencils now, it's looking mighty rough. But yeah, so the story's already written. And I just haven't written out the scripts yet. That's what that, that's what's going to come later. Right now, it's just concept work, so I can get the con the the concept designs out there. But once the concept des design's done, and then I have to actually start making the making the manga art and making the you know start telling the story, I'm gonna have to script out those stories. But again, that's not you know that's not until down the line. We, we, we got some time before I get around to that. Hopefully, you know, after I work on 400 characters, people kind of fall in love with them. Kind of, you know, some people would be like, oh, who's, who, who's that character? I want to know more about, you know what I mean? Like, like, that's the whole reason why I'm doing this is try to get people interested in it. Because if I can't even get people interested in the artwork, it's like, how interested in the story can they be? Oh, is this the Persona 5 guy? Oh, it's going to be a problem because it's in Japanese, so I can't... Okay, so the Persona 5 guy also created that Catherine video game. I heard about it. I should probably watch a playthrough of that Catherine video game. I think I tried it, you know, years ago. There we go. We got a good thing going here. Oh, you're out of here, JJ? Yeah, man. Have a good one. Catch you again sometime, for sure. Take care, man. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for stopping by. And, you know, there's things that, what, what I'm loving about working on these, uh, 
on this concept, all this concept design stuff and putting together the maps and things like that, you know, that I've been doing here is like there's so there's so much going on that I just didn't realize I could do or that would be there for instance you know when I was putting together the thumbnails and I have all the locations and I then I had the world map and then I pasted uh let me show this again so I put together the world map and then I had a bunch of this is the the map that I'm creating all of those uh, drawings that I showed you the the page that has the six illustrations on them I I cut them up and then I started throwing the the thumbnails over the world map and it was like, okay, this is where those lo locations are going to be located, you know. On and I did the whole the whole world map like that. And then I went further, and then I I just put the character that's associated with that world map. Sorry, I put the character that's associated with that world um, with the thumbnail that's on the world map, and then it was like, oh, okay, and it helped me see the world a whole lot better. But this doesn't, you know. It serves the imagination because there's so little information. There's enough there to get you thinking about things, especially me since, you know, I created all of this. But it's like, this is not this. <laughs> and that's what I mean by it's like, ooh. And that's what I mean by it's so interesting. Because now when I put these things together, for instance, like I need to connect these lands. I need to make them form and function. And, and what are the ideas that go into making these societies work and making the people from this land work? And what are the borders? Um, you know, where does one character's uh, kind of land run out? And then, you know, where does the next character's land begin? Because the story doesn't necessarily linearly run through from location to location. It's not like pit stops where, okay, we're going to be here. We're going to be there. Okay, we're going to be here. I, when I was mapping out my main character's journey... You know, I, I literally have a, a color-coded uh, map, you know, of the, you know, the world map. And then, like, color-coded strings and being like, this is where the, the main character is going to be. Uh, it goes from here to there to there to da 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 So it's not like he pit stops along the way. You know, he's not Ash Ketchum. <laughs> he's just going from one town to one town. He is going from one town to one town, but he's not... It's not like a linear do, 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 stop A, stop B, stop C, stop D, you know, things like that. He's actually going around. You know, wherever it's like convenient for him. He's actually just going to the places where he needs to go at that time.
Sorry, I, I'm getting tagged in things. It's really weird. You know, the, it, it's like when I'm on here and those robots stop by and they're like, yo, get a million followers, buy followers, buy followers. <laughs> um, you know, I end up getting tagged in things. People are like, buy followers. It's like, man, I'm not. It's like, thank you, but no thank you. So you start getting tagged in things and you're like, oh, wait, what's this? Is this an opportunity? Nope. Just more. Yeah. I don't really understand the robot follower thing. Is it like, like, oh, you buy followers so that way you, you look like you have a million followers. But, I don't know. It's like, I, I, I'm not interested in followers for the following. Like, I'm, I'm interested in the followers for the, for the sake of community, to be able to talk to them. Like, am I, am I going to be talking to these robots? Who are these robots? Are they being operated by people? <laughs> w would I be talking with people then? Are these people only interested in talking to me about my ideas and my story and my characters and things like that just because I'm paying them to? I'm like, I'm not interested in that. Genuine connections. Right? That's what it's all about, right? People who are genuinely interested in uh in what I'm doing here, you know? Certainly a lot more valuable than just like people going to my my Instagram account and then being like, Wow, this guy has a million followers. Like maybe it's a marketing strategy of like, you know, a real person will see that you have a million followers, so it might compel them to also want to follow. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's the idea behind it. But haven't like celebrities gotten caught? And it's weird to say the word caught, but haven't they gotten caught? with like buying followers and don't they get clowned for doing that? So it becomes like, like what is that? Like you wouldn't clown someone for doing something good. You wouldn't use the word caught. Oh, this guy was caught donating money. <laughs> like you don't say people got caught doing something positive. Something that's like, you, that you would want to award them for. This guy was caught uh, helping grandma across the street. This guy was caught, <laughs> uh, you know, picking a bus up off of a kid. This guy, like, <laughs> we caught him saving someone's life. Like, like no. Like, usually when you catch people doing stuff, it's like, oh, you caught them doing something disagreeable. So, yeah, when celebrities got caught with buying followers, I think that kind of shut that whole industry down, didn't it? Uh, maybe, maybe enough people are still into it. Maybe that is the vibe, is to, like, buy followers. But then w what would be the system? If if it 
if the if the concept is hey buy a million followers look like you have a million followers that way when actual people see um, they maybe they're compelled to follow so that way you gain actual followers but then what do you have to do because I think those deals the way that they work is like you you only have like a certain amount of uh, like time with those followers it's like yeah I'm buying a million followers but it's only for like a month let's say or you buy X amount of followers for X amount of time you know it's like a contract and then once once that contracts up you you either renew it or you don't so then what happens you, you spend all this money you get these fake followers and then you know, you may get some real followers from it, but then your contract is up. Are you just gonna overnight lose, like willy-nilly willy lose all your follow, all the fake followers at least? Maybe not the real ones that joined you in that time? So then do you have to like slow feed, um, like slowly weed out the fake followers and slowly weed in the uh, the real followers? over that time so that way you're kind of forced into keeping up contracts because it's like it's going to be noticeable if overnight your your followers go from let's say you have 100 followers you buy a million so you have a million 100 and then you get I, I don't know let's say a quarter million followers because of that you know, you looked important for having a million. It's like, it, it's going to be noticeable overnight if like, oh, he went from having one, 1.25 million, you know, and a hundred <laughs> to just a quarter million, even though that's a lot, you know, that's still a lot of people and there's no guarantee that you'll even get that many. Um, but it'll be a noticeable drop. It'd be like, oh, you just lost, you know, three quarters, you know, damn near 75%. Let's just call it 74% of your followers overnight. Doesn't it become obvious at that point? And then, I don't know, do people notice that when that happens? I don't know. I don't know anyone who's ever bought followers. I don't, I don't really understand the system. I just know I'm not impressed by it. You know, when you see when you see the graphics, like me as a graphic designer, I was talking about being a graphic designer before. It's like when you look at the graphic design. It's like it doesn't even look that good. So it's like who are these people who are putting this stuff together? It's a little corny. Sorry, I'm listening to the David Finch. He's interviewing somebody. Who's he interviewing? Him and his wife are interviewing. Somebody. Jason Fabic, Fabok.
Uh, doesn't it say who he is? I'll have to look him up. Uh, Jason. DC Comics, Batman, okay, alright, well I love me some Batman, anyway, now I know. Okay, let's, let's finish out this part, this left side. Am I still on camera? Are, are we focused? Yeah. See? This guy sounds like me, talking about Batman the Animated Series and not getting into comics until he was like 14. I didn't get, walk into my first comic shop until I was 16 years old. I was into, I was into tattoos before I was into comics. Oh snap! Is it? It's already eight thirty. Damn man, I gotta put on. I gotta put on some coffee. Where's my? Where's my BRB sign? I'm gonna go make a pot of coffee for a second. And let that brew in the background. There we go. Let me at least get give you something to look at while I'm away. Be back in a minute.
All right. Back. And let's pick this back up. Yeah, I don't even remember where I started. I think I had to do this. I did all this. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna do this town. I'm, I might as well just, where am I, going on two hours? Maybe when the uh, coffee is done brewing, when I go to drink, cause you know, I either, I either stream and, and drink the coffee while I'm streaming and it's like mad, like boring, you know? Man, it breaks me. After, after everything I said this morning about not being able to get a job, to listen to this interview and they're talking about what it takes to get in. And how people, it, they're like, oh, they just, you know, the comic industry, they just want to sell comics. So if you have, have an art style and everything that they know that they could sell comics with, you're going to get a job. And it's like, oh, man, that, that, that hurts. <laughs> Does, does that mean like, I don't, sometimes I just think I'm crazy where it's like my eyes are seeing something different. Get a good angle. Man, it it really hurts to hear them say stuff like that because it's like if it's just that simple, man, what kind of Like, how much must I suck <laughs> if, I don't know. stuff like that.
Okay, so this is the guy who worked on Three Jokers. I figured as much. They were talking about it earlier. They were showing off the Three Jokers artwork, and I was like, okay, so this must be the... But it is. Hey, man, this is beautiful artwork. Sounds like the coffee's done. So let me just try to find a good place to end this stream because what we're we're yeah I'll I'll stop it at at two hours. So it's gonna be like seven minutes from now. Um. Yeah, I can't wait to ink it so I can clean up. You know, a lot of stuff is getting blurred out and disappearing in here. But, yeah, once I ink it, it'll be clear. I was really wanting to uh, fix this building because it looked like crooked in a way that I just didn't like it. So I was like, I'm going to have to fix that when I get to the pencils. That's why I'm doing the outline first. That way I can just fill it in later on. Sorry, I just cracked my back. And I got this spot that <laughs> was bothering me since yesterday.
clean up everything I need to clean up. Oh, look, we hit the, hit the two-hour mark. Well, I think I'll stop this one here. Um, yeah, we got a good chunk done, man. Got a, a bit of the city, all of this uh, jungle forest area. Got the water here, so I highlighted this. Got around this, uh, this one. And, uh, yeah. So far, so good, man. Um, damn. What else do I want to do? I don't want to. That's the hardest part is, is to stop. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'll definitely be back on later on. I'm just going to uh, stop this for now, go get a couple things done in my day, and then I'll be back later on today. I'd like to finish at least doing the blue pencils on this map and then start uh, jumping on uh, uh, doing some of the markers, colored pencils, and then uh, inking. I don't know what order I'm going to be doing it in, but I'd like to do markers first just so I can kind of really cover a lot of ground and, and finally get the look going on in here. So that way we're not just looking at, you know, you know, not necessarily a monochrome thing, but you know, this, this is just a sketch. It's just pencils and, and everything like that. Once I start rendering it out and start getting the colors and, you know, it'll just bring it, bring it to life that much more. You know what I mean? For instance, like these are rainbows, but they just look like a couple of arches. So it's like, okay, yeah, definitely. When I get to coloring those in, it, it'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. I'd like to finish this today. Now that I'm on now that I'm on this and I was able to get this part done, I'm, I'm happy with it. So this was a good stream, two, you know, a good two hours. I want to thank JJ for stopping by as well as uh, Nisa for stopping by. Thank you. You know, thank you both, man. It really means a lot to me. Um, and for sure, keep coming back. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Uh, you know, that, that that's what I need, man. <laughs> Right now, that's what I need. So I really appreciate it. Um, anyone who who enjoys this, I'm I'm gonna keep doing it. I've showed you, you know, this is only a bits and parts of the maps. You know, I'm not even getting to the big places yet, the big cities, the big, you know, the big technologies, the big, you know, scarred earth areas. I got a lot, a lot of, a lot of things. It's a whole world. 
And, you know, you think about our planet, it, it gets, there's a lot. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, so yeah, thank, thank you everybody uh, for watching and, and tuning in and all the kind words. I really appreciate it. Uh, that's going to be the end of this stream. You know, two hours is pretty standard for me. And yeah, I'm G Mr. Drew. That is at G Mr. Drew on all socials, uh, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Patreon, Fiverr, uh, you know, Twitch, obviously. W where else? It's got to be somewhere else. Either way, follow, like, and subscribe. I'm always posting things all the time. There's always new stuff coming on, especially these old videos are on my YouTube. They get backlogged and uploaded eventually. Um, and then, uh, yeah, gmrdrew.art, that's my website. Uh, you can check that out. You can see anything and everything that I've ever done and everything that I've kind of, you know, for the most part, a lot of things got lost along the way for the past 25 years. And, you know, there's uh, some professional work that I'm not allowed to put up. But, you know, for the most part, you, you really get a whole lot going on and there's links to everything. Um, you can find me anywhere, everywhere. And for sure, reach out, contact me, you know, DM me, email me, let me know if you, you know, you know, that that's the whole reason why I'm doing this is to connect with the world. And, you know, obviously I have to be open for the world to connect with me in order to make that happen. So uh, it is what it is. This has been the Andrew Glosheski Experience, episode 86, continuing more map design, creating these legends and, uh, yeah, man. Love you all. Thank you. I'll be back.